Hi, I'm Dr. Sheila Segerson, Community Solutions Director at Maddie's Fund, and today I'm going to talk to you about moving beyond the five freedoms, the five domains. This presentation is based upon a paper by David Miller, Updating Animal Welfare Thinking, Moving Beyond the Five Freedoms Toward a Life Worth Living, published in Animals in 2016. Several other publications for you to check out since that time. So let's start with a question. How do we know if an animal is experiencing adequate welfare? Historically, we use the five freedoms to assess animal welfare in the shelter environment. The five freedoms were developed in 1979, and they were originally developed for farm animals, and the um, animal welfare movement adapted these five, or didn't necessarily adapt them, took, up, took on these five freedoms, and we now use them for assessing welfare in animals. And the five freedoms are great. Um, it talks about making sure that we have freedom from things that can negatively impact our welfare, things like hunger and thirst, discomfort, pain, fear and distress, distress and also the, the freedom to express normal behavior. And they're good, but we've learned a lot since we started using the five freedoms. And that's why I would suggest that the five domains model is a new model, newer model that we should consider and probably start using instead of the five freedoms approach. So we'll talk about that a little bit more. So when we're in the shelter environment, this little dog in this picture um, might have freedom from all of these things, but um, how, how is his welfare? This, this little guy doesn't have a whole lot of comfort. He doesn't have, he doesn't have discomfort, but he doesn't have a whole lot of comfort and he doesn't have, he's all by himself. He doesn't have many good things happening in his life. He can express normal behavior. He can walk around, he can jump, he can bark. Um, but there aren't a lot of positive things going on in his environment. Thinking about things that like this older dog who is simply laying in the grass and enjoying the smell of nature and warm grass and the being in the shade on a hot summer day or being able to interact with a companion that, um, that Herbie in this picture really enjoys interacting with. And these are things that are in the five freedoms because this is the ability to express normal behavior, but the five domains focuses on these positive aspects of welfare a lot more in my eyes than the five domains. Um, the five domains does a lot more than the five freedoms did. Sorry if I said that wrong. So our five domains start with survival factors of nutritional nutrition, health, and environment. We'll go into this in more detail. And then behavioral factors. And those four areas then produce our mental state or our cycle and our psychological well-being. So our survival factors are things like nutrition. You see those cats eating in the upper left environmental factors so things in our environment that can either improve or harm our welfare and then our physical health certainly has a big impact on our well-being and then those are the first three domains the fourth domain is our behavioral expression and whether it's something like playing with a companion or something that is not positive, but can be part of, of life. You see the cats in the lower right there who are look like they're about to get into a fight, having the ability to express a wide range of natural behaviors uh, can certainly help to um, improve welfare. Obviously pieces of it can detract welfare as well. Affective state is important thing to to talk and to think about. So when we talk about our mental health and that mental state, we think of the range between negative and positive experiences. And we wanna do everything we can to maximize the positive pieces. So exposure to things like 
relaxation, feelings of relief, excitement, pleasure, and doing what we can to minimize emotional pain, anxiety, frustration, craving for things that we really need but don't have, um, like food and water and shelter. So here's a depiction and more detail about the five domains, and you can see them listed up here on the screen. And you can see for each of the five domains, you can see things that shift us towards the negative for that particular domain and things that shift us towards the positive for that particular domain. So we can see that when we talk about mental states related to behavior, some negative experiences are things like frustration, boredom, isolation, depression, anxiety, exhaustion um, from not enough rest. Whereas positive uh, mental states related to the behavior domain, calmness, engaging with our environment, sociable interaction, um, getting excited about something, being exposed to novel things, but being exposed to novel things can also be a negative for, for animals who novel things scare them. So positives and negatives to everything. But the important piece is that these four domains of nutrition, environment, physical health, and behavior then produce our mental domain, which then conveys our welfare status. When we talk about welfare status, there's a balance of positive and negative. So you can see positive in the upper half here, negative in the lower half. And this is a graphic that I really like from zooaquarium.org.au that um, talks about the fact that during the course of our day, there are some negative things that happen. There are some positive things that happen. So an unexpected noise might cause a bit of stress or discomfort, but then bonding or grooming with someone that we like um, is a positive experience. And overall, we want to work towards having the balance be more positive experiences throughout the day and less negative experiences. We don't really have a goal to eliminate the negative experiences altogether because experiencing those negative things make the positive things all the better, right? So this is another graphic from David Meller's paper talking about different categories and what we're working towards when we're working to improve animal welfare. And we can see that we want to do everything we can to avoid a life not worth living. So this is when the balance of salient things that are relevant and noticeable, salient positive and negative experience is strongly negative and can't be remedied so that euthanasia is the only humane alternative. We want to avoid that. And we want to do everything we can to create a life worth living for the animals in our care, sorry for jumping around, and a good life where the balance of salient positive and negative experience is strongly positive. And we can achieve that by full compliance with best practice advice well above the minimal require requirements of codes of practice or welfare. So that's a brief overview of the five domains model. I hope you enjoyed hearing about it. And I just want to end with this graphic that reminds us that sometimes we have to experience the bad so that we can really learn to appreciate the good things that enter your life. And hopefully the bad is not so bad and the good is really, really good. Thank you all for joining me today. <laughs>